We are now on the eighth screencast in this series on parameterized curves, a 3D example. The parameterization is the following. R of t is e to the t cosine bt, e to the t sine bt, e to the t. So you see I've already drawn here a coordinate axis. I'll go ahead and label it x, y, z. As before, what we'd like to do is understand um, projections onto two coordinate planes and then put the whole thing together. You can see right away that the x and y components are simply a logarithmic spiral. That is to say we have here r of t is e to the t and we have otherwise a rotation. For the logarithmic spiral previously considered I had e to the a t, e to the a t, and just cosine t and sine t. I now have e to the t, e to the t, cosine b t, sine b t. Well, hopefully that's clear. So anyway, let's let's do the um, the two-dimensional um, x y plot. And unlike last time, this time I think I'll draw it down here. Again, I'll draw x down and y to the side, so that this y axis agrees with this y axis and x downward. And we've already considered the logarithmic spiral, so I'll just go ahead and draw it. So in the xy plane, well let me just say, if you're looking down from above, what you'll see is a logarithmic spiral. So let's just draw it. Spirals out from the origin. Again, it's different, difficult to draw something that is increasing as fast as a logarithmic spiral, but something like this. So we have that. Now, let's consider the other direction, or the, the, the z um, behavior. And for this I want to notice that here z is also e to the t. That is to say r and z are the same. So if I draw this coordinate r and z, well r equals z, so whatever, it is, whatever the curve is it will lie along this line where r is equal to z is equal to z. Okay, so 45 degree line. And recall that, that r, of course, is, sorry, let me move this, r itself is it's the square root of x squared plus y squared. So what does this mean? So what is this, uh, this is a, actually corresponds to a surface in 3D. What surface does it correspond to? It corresponds to a cone. And you see I've pre-drawn a cone here. Let me copy and paste it up here. So this corresponds to uh, to a cone in the full 3D space. And let me just go ahead and label it to make sure it's absolutely clear. So as to say, if I go across a certain distance r, whether it be in the strictly in the y direction or any other direction, actually let me indicate that this way. As I say, at a fixed fixed z value certain radius there, and that radius is equal to the z value, so can't quite tell it in this case, but this, this here, this distance out and this height up are meant to be the same. It's not quite to scale, but there it is. All right, so this curve, this full three-dimensional curve must lie on this cone, and when looked at from above, it must look like a logarithmic spiral. So we're now in a position to draw it. I guess I won't, do, well, I'll erase a little bit of this. I'll erase it. It wasn't very good anyway. So let's just draw it. Ready. I'll draw it bold. Ready, set. So I can't draw it all the way to the origin, but it's spiraling out from the origin there. It's spiraling around. I'm drawing. Oh, it should be draw. It should be. Um, it's not a very logarithmic spiral, but, but that's the essential idea. And let's see what it looks like in reality. If you draw it with a computer, this is what you get. This is drawn with MATLAB. Here's a view in a kind of usual projection. You see the growing spiral. Here's a almost head-on view or edge-on view. You can see the underlying cone that the spiral lives on. Again, both drawn with MATLAB. So that's the last example. And um, what I'm going to continue by discussing 
giving a little bit more advice about sketching and a little bit of advice about constructing parameterizations.